Hey everybody, welcome back. Wow, who would have thought? Who would have thought? If you remember a few months back, I reviewed this clamp. It was cheap. It was about 18, 20 bucks Canadian. I mean, that's cheap, right? No, it's not. Compared to the new Anning KT87N, seven bucks, 89 cents Canadian. That's under $7 US for a clamp meter. A clamp meter? Are you kidding me? Airs out there, I know it's only AC, it's only AC, it doesn't do DC amps, but man, we're talking seven bucks. Give a guy a break. Pick this little bad boy up off of Amazon. It took about two months, literally, about seven weeks to get to my home. But it was worth the wait. Alas, here it is. Now it didn't even ship in a box, it didn't even come in a box. I mean, I know it's cheap, but wow. No, it came in this um, bubble wrap, that was it. Bubble wrap. That little Amazon, you know, package thingy, and that, and that was it, man. Nothing else. Came with these test leads as well as this uh, little leaflet pullout. Um, yeah, it's all in Chinese. I know, I know. Seven bucks. Let's just remember that as I'm doing this review. Seven bucks. So at least it tells us the specs. AC amps, up to 400 amps AC, uh, 600 volts DC, because it even does DC voltage as well, which we'll look at shortly. So, you know, hey, so far I'm pretty happy. During my latest Sanwa America review a few months back as well, um, I highlighted this clamp, the uh, DCM60R. About a hundred bucks, not cheap. And you know what? It doesn't even do volts DC, strictly AC amps or AC volts. So, I mean, all things considered, wow. Now I have a ton of AC clamps I've yet to review, ton of them. But for whatever reason, uh, you know, for me, this one takes the cake right now because of the price. It was just so darn cheap. I thought, hey, this one is worth that oopsie quick look-see. Oopsie quick look-see. <sighs> I mean, let's face it, 40 bucks, 35, 40 something, seven bucks, do the math. First of all, fit and finish, surprisingly uh, decent. Now, the $20 clamp I looked at that was one of those cheapos a while back, um, you know what, believe it or not, this one actually feels better. The adding feels better made, go figure. Um, you have a pretty decent trigger action here. Nice big trigger button. Sometimes they're tiny, you know, sometimes it just gets lost, but you know, all things said, feels good. And look at that trigger action. Whoa! Now, it does have the smaller clamp head, so that might be a problem. But you know what, for most cable uh, installations, uh, testing, I think, this, I think this is gonna work. And if it doesn't, it's only seven bucks. Has a bit of that Fisher Price look to it, doesn't it? You know, these weird colors, the red, the blue, the yellow, the green. I know it's a little funky, a little wonky, but you know, it's kind of a fun looking design, I think, as well. And, uh, you know, yeah. And you can even move this selector with gloves on because you got those nice big treads on the selector switch. So, nah, pretty impressive. Another impressive point is the test leads it shipped with, not bad. Uh, they have that rating 600 volt CAT3. Um, take it with a grain of salt, but you know what? They're really pointy, really sharp. Um, they feel good in the hand. A little on the smaller side, but check out the shroud. It's that straight in shroud. So uh, with this kind of a clamp, it's gonna work really, really well. So, you know, all things considered, uh, for seven bucks, it works. I've also seen them refer to the Anning KT87N as an HD display, so they're talking high definition here. But, and I will say but, it actually is pretty crisp on the eyes. Um, Size-wise, but the same as that Sanwa, but uh, it is really very easy on the eyes. Now, when I go ahead and say it's HD display, I don't know, but mm, it, it, it works. I already have got that cheapo KT87N lined up with some other clamp meters here. Kind of the gambit in terms of the clamp range these days. Uh, we've got some other cheapies here and we've got uh, our expensive Sanwa, no doubt. 
So anywhere from about 120 bucks US down to $7 US is what we're looking at in terms of price. I've got an ATX power supply here. We're gonna just check the current draw. It's uh, not under load, so it's not gonna be too high, but uh, be interesting to see what they all say. Here we go. Starting off with KT87N, here we go. Fairly small clamp head, but uh, no trouble here. Coming in around, let's see here. Hit the hole button. 1.27 amps is what she gave us. Next up, let's go to the B side. Now this is a pretty sweet clamp. I reviewed this some time ago. Um, lots of functionality here and a great looking display too. Uh, we are in AC clamp mode. Here we go. Hit that hold button. Coming up 1.3 amps, just slightly tad higher than the Anning. Next up, the Sanwa, the most expensive clamp of the bunch in AC mode. Here we go. And that one agrees with our Anning, 1.2 amps it is. Right here we are. Now we reviewed this cheap a while back. This was around 15 bucks US. And whoa, check it out. That is a lot lower than the other clamps thus far. Let's just hit that hold button. So coming up to 0.76, not even one amp. Holy moly, why so low? All right, Unity is next. Here we go, another sweet clamp. This probably has the smallest head of the bunch. Gonna kind of get it in there, and there we are. Hit that hold button. And we've got 1.192, just shy of 1.2 amps. Next up, the Kaiwitz. Did a review on this a while back. Very nice clamp, big head. Here we are. Hit that hold button. And 1.3 amps for the Kaiwitz. So, so far the Kaiwitz is the highest in terms of a current rating. And finally, we have another Anning here. I'll be reviewing this one in a while. That hold button. And 1.3 amps. So pretty close actually to the uh, the Kiwis. So there you have it. Um, wow, quite an interesting little um, take on it. Now that uh, Chippo Anning, pretty well on par. I'd say about 1.2 to 1.3 is where things are sitting. And uh, everyone, except that uh, god-awful 3266L, was close. I mean, this is the worst of the bunch. Way too low, 0.76 of an amp. And uh, yeah, so interesting. Just goes to show you, the cheapy can play with the big boys. DC accuracy test here. Now, we don't have much in terms of resolution. We only have one setting for the volts DC and that's 600 volts. This is a five volt test. So, we're just not gonna get the resolution we want. Should be looking at 5.0 volts. We're getting a four something. Uh, just not enough going on here to, to let us know. So, eh. Next up, it's diode time. Yes, this little cheapy does diodes as well. Start off with a standard diode. And coming in is forward voltage drop of uh, 0.59 volts. That is looking good. Start off with that red LED. What do we have? 1.9 volts. It's a little high, actually. It should be more like what 1.7. This uh, yellow LED coming in as 1.9 again. Let's get a little high. It's about 1.8 normally. The green, we have nothing. The blue and the white. So, oh well, I mean, we have one illuminated diode, uh, one out of five, and uh, two out of five in terms of forward voltage drop, even though it's a little on the output voltage in diode mode, 2.2 .2 volts. 
Next up is Continuity. Yes, this little beast does continuity as well. Hey, what do you expect for seven bucks? Starting off with the stock default test leads. Three, two, one. Hey, not bad, latched, loud. Skips a couple of them, but you know, all things considered, it's definitely usable. Let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters, funny thing is, these cost five times the price of the meter. <laughs> Weird. Three, two, one. Oh yeah, latched, loud. Beauty, a tiny little bit better with the Pro Masters. Go figure. 76.7 decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. The little KT87N does uh, AC volts as well. Look at that, we have one setting, the 450 volt, um, but nonetheless, good stuff. It's not true RMS, 119 volts, but that being said, pretty darn close. Starting off at 15 kilo ohm, coming in as 18. Go up to 47 kilo ohm, coming in as 58. 100, coming in as 120, and this is probably gonna bring us over, and yeah, over limit. So there you go, not much in terms of range, but at least it does something. And that is powered by two AAA batteries. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a threaded insert here, so eh, I'm gonna wear it over time, but you know what, eh, seven bucks. Already Aphrodite taking a closer look on the inside. Well, there's not too much to report, is there? Pretty tiny PCB. But that being said, there is some important things to point out. First of all, let's start from the top. Uh, well, actually, it's the bottom. It's right beside the inputs. This is the uh, Cobb, the uh, chip on board. 48-pin, uh, um, but nonetheless, the cheaper Cobb-style uh, microcontroller going on here. Here's our two inputs, but i got to say, lots of solder. Lots of solder going on here, so those are uh, in there pretty darn good. One PTC over here as well. Interesting, it says the M87 version 1, M87 version 1, hmm. Uh, we have a nice stainless steel pin, um, spring rather, for that uh, trigger action. Now that spring is going up against a plastic inlay here, so oh, that's too bad. Would have been nice to see some, some metal, uh, you know, some sort of a causeway or metal rivet something to interface with that spring because how long that's gonna last i don't know only time will tell i'm gonna keep using this though because i gotta say i, I am rather impressed um here is our main clamp of course hell sensor inside and yeah check it out now something weird uh if i can get in a little bit closer we have this um kind of a, a wire coming in that's wrapped around that sensor th through the clamp and it, it comes out here and for some reason they've got it uh, interlaced with this um, insulated wire not sure what that's all about um, haven't seen that before but anyway oh going out of focus there we are so is what it is but yeah a, a little a little strange but that being said we do have that nice solid metal clamp head and uh, yeah you know for seven bucks can't really expect much more. Our hold button is over here, and that is it. Let's take a quick peek on the other side. So here we are on the other side. There's the rotary selector switch with the uh, count of one, two, three, four, five pads, and those are nice gold-plated pads as well. Um, selector tracks as well. Nice. There's no grease going on, no dielectric whatsoever, not greased. Um, and there is our, uh, well, HD, as they like to say, display with our zebra strip. Um, so all in all, I gotta say, eh, Cute little package. And that being said, for a tiny little PCB, they have five Phillips screws holding this thing in. Five Phillips screws for this little PCB. Nuts. Alrighty, let's put it back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Anning KT87N. Oh yes, this is a cheapo clamp that's worth its money. You know what, what can I say? I came into this with pretty low expectations. It is what it is, it's a cheap clamp. Uh, doesn't have a whole lot in terms of feature set, but you know what, what it does, it does really well. It was able to stay right on par with the rest of the clamps, some of them costing, you know, 20 times as much. So, you know, what can you say? This little guy, held build quality, up. surprisingly, not that bad. Actually comes with a carry strap as well. Just didn't put it on, but you know. 
Sure, it doesn't compare to a Sanwa or even that Kaiwi 206D in terms of functionality or feature set. It doesn't have the build quality of the Sanwa, but you know, end of the day, for seven freaking dollars, this little guy will get the job done. The Anning KT87NL Cheapo Clamp, cheapest clamp in the world at the time I bought it at least, gets a solid 4.5 out of five stars. Yeah, this sucker gets stolen. You're not gonna start crying. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.